Well, John, you know, here's something. You've got a couple of C3s. Yeah, this is the, uh, the 1970 C3. It's an LT1. The C3 came out in 1968. Uh, originally, the 68 model was based on the 67 chassis with the new body. 69, they went to the new chassis and the new body. And then 70 was uh, uh, probably one of the best years for the LT1. Very year, a uh, very small year run in 1970. They, uh, they ran, because of industrial problems, they ran the 69 model year for basically 18 months, and then the, the 70s were only available for six months. And the LT1 was supposed to come out in 1969, never made it, came out in 1970 instead. So it's a 370 horsepower, uh, 350 cubic, yeah. cubic inch yeah. engine, highest horsepower carbureted motor that they built. Really? And these came out with a forge crank, forge pistons, uh, high flow heads, very high horsepower cars and very well balanced and very expensive car in its day. Really? Yeah. Well, yeah. What, what would it have sold for back then? In the day, it was around a $20,000 well, car. That's a lot of money, don't yeah. eh? To give you an idea, the LT1 option was another around $400 as an option. You could get the big block for a $152 option. So these were, you know, an expensive yeah, car yeah. in their day. This was the car that Duntoff, the, the you know, Zord, the Duntoff, Duntoff, yeah. this was the car he always wanted to build, a high horsepower, yeah, small block right, car. Because yeah. yeah, yeah. he started off, didn't he, in the it, Corvettes, he was one of the guys. One of the guys, yeah. probably one of the drivers, especially of the C2, he was the driver, and the early C3s yeah. were his, was, you know, what he wanted to do. Yeah, wow. So with the LT1, uh, because they had the big uh, oil pan, there was no power steering, uh, because it was a hot rod, factory hot rod, yeah. there was no air conditioning or anything like that. So this car is, uh, is, is only done 40 odd thousand miles wow. from new. Wow. I've got all the documentation back to Reedman Chevrolet in Pennsylvania. And has, it all, has it been, re, it's been repainted? Everything? No, this is pretty is much as original. Really? Yeah, the wow. interior is like brand new. I mean, I mean it's, it's been well maintained. Yeah, it, yeah, it is. It's been very well looked after, and uh, it's a you know it's a truly is a love car. This was the C3 was the car that came out with the T-top okay, roof, yeah. and these come out of course, and uh, nowhere near as much room in the back of these of course as what you get in the C2s. Ooh, yeah, the, so yeah, very well, tight in the back there, yeah. and uh, yeah, they were. Um, this is a one-day yeah. trip car, not a oh, not, yeah. a weekend not a weekend car. car. No. And, and we've got a new gas cap as well. Yeah, you know? well, the gas caps were all basically on the C3s were all there. Uh, yeah. They kept this shape right through to 1977. In 78, they went with the 25th anniversary model was the first one that had the big glass okay, window yes, on the yeah, back. Yeah. Yep. Um. So four-wheel disc brakes, uh, wide ratio transmission in this one. And again, they, you know, as Mick alerted to earlier on, they've got the, you know, the the interesting cockpit inside. Very tight car to sit yeah. in, though. You know, yeah. Uh, well, much. Yeah, it's, they're so so removed, you know, from the C2. Isn't yeah, it? yeah. Much much tighter car. Much harder to get in and out of. But now you've got tele tilt steering columns. Uh, you've got emergency uh, indicators. You've got a much better heating and ventilation yeah. system in them. They moved. They kept the park brake in the centre console, which they moved to in 1967, like in Bill's car. This car again has got fast glass. So fast glass. somebody went into the factory or into the showroom in 1970 and decided this was the car they were going to have, and they ticked all the boxes. And it's believed on the C3 registry, this is one of 13 as built. Really? Yeah. Wow. We've got all the documentation. I mean, for like, it. isn't it amazing? Like, here's little old New Zealand. We've got these special cars. Here. Yeah, yeah. They're, it's amazing yeah. what's in the country, and uh, yeah, they're a nice car. There's, I mean, there's so many of them in Canterbury here too. You yes, know? yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys are so yeah, yeah, crazy or lucky, you know. <laughs> we'll go with crazy. crazy. Lucky. <laughs> go with crazy lucky. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. You know, this one. This one here is undergoing a bit of re uh, rework at the moment. We're uh, rebuilding the 454. It's uh, it, the 73 was a transition year. Uh, no chrome bumper on the front now, you see, mm. but it's still got a chrome bumper on the rear. It's got the uh, the luggage rack mm. attachment and whatnot. And we're just slowly rebuilding the 454 to go back in there later on in the in the week. What, what sort of horsepower is the 454? Well, they're not terribly high on the horsepower. By 1973, they'd changed from gross flywheel horsepower to net horsepower. So they're probably around... What, what's the difference? Well, the net horsepower is the horsepower available at the rear oh, wheels. Okay, yeah. And the gross horsepower was the horsepower available at the flywheel. Oh, yeah. So... It was, a, it was a mandatory change that they made in, in the 1971 through to yeah, 1972, okay. and that's why basically if you look at the 71 horsepower ratings, they're quite a lot higher than the 72s. Wow. And then from 72, 73 on, they started getting heavily involved in emission equipment, 
And it's, it's interesting, you know, to, to, to follow the, you know, the transition uh, through and see all the little bits and pieces they were doing to, you know, like to ruin them in some ways. You know? Well, it wasn't really the factory's option. It was basically, well, it was make. forced yeah. on them by the EPA and the yeah. American government. And uh, it, we all lived with what they've got. But yeah. uh, today they're back at very high horsepowers again and, and virtually using no fuel and making oh. and no emissions. Yeah. And like, like, you see Cadillacs, you know, like 700 horsepower and, mm. and they're sold to everyday drivers. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, absolutely amazing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, yeah. They're, they're doing something right, I guess, in that respect. I they? think that they have been forced to do things yeah. right. It's uh, about time. Yeah, yeah, they were kicking and screaming to the yeah. party, but uh, they came eventually. Yeah, it's hard to turn a big ship around. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's hard. Yep. Yeah. You know, John, like, like, well, you, you also help friends. You know, you, you do you do bits and work on their core bits and that, you know. It's, it's just a hobby. I mean, yeah, I've got a full-time job. No, it's just a hobby for yeah. me. And uh, I'm pleased to be able to help these yeah. guys out more than anything else. And well, like in doing so, like, that would give you so much more knowledge about so many cars, you know. It, yeah, there's a, you need quite a bit of special knowledge, especially on the rear end on these C2s and C3s. Yeah. They're a unique thing, and there's some special tooling required. Yeah. And uh, over the years, I've either built or acquired the tooling to work on them. And just getting the knowledge, uh, it's, you know, just doing things like I did a, 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 dis, a power brake conversion on a C3 yeah. for a guy a wee while ago. And I hadn't realised that basically they start by hanging the power brake oh, booster. They start by hanging, yeah. hanging somebody. They hung the booster in mid-air yeah. and then assembled the whole car around it. So to change, the, to put a power brake booster into one of these is quite a mission. Yeah. Uh, they're they're not an easy car to work on. Yeah. But uh, do you know what the like LT one? Do you know what LT one was just a uh, was just a factory code. Okay, it was yeah. just a uh, yeah. something that they decided. But we can look under the but hood it, of this the one. LT one it does it always does sound pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, and they've it's interesting that they kept on bringing that uh, wow. connotation through over the years. You can buy a brand new LT one today, and the new uh, the new uh, C seven yes, they've okay. gone back to that LT one connotation. Oh. So these came out with an 800 horse, uh, back, an 800 CFM uh, holly on them, solid lifter cam, and like I say, um, very high compression, high yeah. horsepower engine. Lovely old car to drive. Well, I guess it spins them up, smokes the tires. Um, we try not to do try that. Not, you well, know. That, that, I guess that is called temporary loss of traction. Isn't it, it can be, yeah, yeah. yeah. They have a bit of a, um, a bit of a phobia about yeah, that these yeah, days. That's strange. I guess you know, you know, they took the lead out of paint and look what happened. <laughs> you know. Yeah, you know, John. I, I, you know, on behalf of everybody out there, you know, I just want to thank you, you know, for bringing us here today. You know, You're most and showing welcome. us all these Corvettes because you know, people see them all the time, sure. and you know, we can give them a little bit of knowledge. They can say, "Oh, that's an LT, you know, L, yeah. that's a, you know, a C1, yeah. C2, you know." And it's it's neat, you know, especially for kids and that, you know. Sure. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. No, so, be, been an absolute pleasure no, having you, you here, so Doug. Much, man. It's been great. And you buggers over there, it's been good to see you too. Woohoo! We can call you buggers. Oh, well. <laughs> That's been polite. Yeah, I know.